Hey everybody, welcome to the first episode of Sons of Gold, a Stars Without Numbers revised merchant trading campaign. I'm Arthur Perkins, this is AP Gaming Real. Let's introduce ourselves, and then we'll hop directly into play, and then we'll talk about our characters. Uh, however, if you want to know more about us and our characters, we have an episode zero on YouTube that you can go and watch. Uh, look for the playlist called Sons of Gold Jam Prep. Sid, Sid, Sid. Let's start with you. I didn't do it. Yeah, we're going clockwise. Who are you? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm Sid. I'm Sid Alpha. I do video game news, reviews, and everything under the sun. Uh, actually, just finally finished putting out a video today that took about 11 hours worth of editing. And it's getting almost no views. That's fun. It's always a good feeling. But yeah, it's been good. Uh, it's been a whopping 48 hours since the uh, Battletech stream. <laughs> so not a whole lot has happened there <laughs> in the meantime, although it has been just dumping snow all day today. It's crazy. It's just like day before yesterday, bare earth. And then the world just decided, decided you know what? It's still winter, buddy. No, we've got uh, almost two feet of snow out there now <laughs> over the course of two and a half days. So, it's like yeah, summer it's out here in California right now. It was like springtime weather just on like Tuesday ish. And now it's just buried in snow. It's knee deep snow. It's absolutely insane. I, I was literally working in the garden today. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, other than that, things have been going pretty well aside from fighting the snow and eating horrible, healthy foods that I cannot stand because I'm still trying to lose weight. Mm -hmm. I know that pain, bud. Virgil, who are you? Hey, everyone. It's me, Virgil, also known as Sircon5 here on the internet, uh, specifically over at, at SoundCloud and on the Twitch. Uh, but but don't feel bad about all your, your efforts, Sid, because a lot of my tracks I work on for 60 or 80 hours, and they have dozens of listens on my SoundCloud. Um, but every once feeling. in a while, every <laughs> once in a while, I get one. I have like one track with like five thousand plays, and I'm like, I don't know why that one gets every single play, and the other ones have like hundred or two hundred, uh, if they're good popular. But I'd love everyone to go listen to my music over at SoundCloud.com/slash/Circon5 because it's it's not really art until someone's listened to it and interpreted it. So go ahead and check this is that very stuff true. out. Yeah, check it. And check it's it really out. good too. Thank you. Kelsa. I got a doggo. True. I saw. The I dog seems upset, though. Lots of places. Uh, gosh, what, what, which picture was this even? The one oh, where it was. Had a big old cone. Yeah. Yeah. She's got to have that cone for another week. She just got spayed. So it's, uh, well, she got spayed last week. So. Anyway, the point is, she has to wear a big old cone for another week. Rough. She doesn't like it. Difficult she's life. She's a tiny, tiny puppy, and she's so cute. But she's full grown, so she's just a very small dog. She's smaller. She's a more small dog than I thought we were going to get, but she's super cute, and I love her. So it worked out. Very well. What, what can you tell us about you and not just your dog? No, that's the most exciting thing about me. I see. Uh... I guess I guess I also stream other role-playing games on my channel, twitch.tv slash Kelsey which are role-playing games of uh, the fun and serious varieties. So uh, I'll, I'll talk about more about that later. But that's basically what I do on the internet. All right. Well, I'm Arthur Perkins. I stream fairly often. Less often lately, but still pretty often. Uh, I have a bunch of streams. This is a veteran cast. We've all had numerous streams together. I don't know if we've ever all been on the same show at the same time. I don't think that's happened. No. Not this particular combination. Yeah. I don't think so. But, uh, but it's still like drawing three aces uh, <laughs> on the I deal. I think I had Sid on a, on a fiasco show back in like 2014. A ways back. Yeah, it was actually, uh, I think it was a... Um, I said a dungeon uh, Dungeon, I think it was a dungeon world. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, pretty sure. 
Remember the days where we used to play Dungeon World every yeah, few weeks? Yeah, it had, it had Dr. Wreckage on it, and I ended up just completely derailing the campaign in the first 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, it felt so terrible. That's how Dungeon World works, though. <laughs> yeah, it's designed like that. Pretty, pretty much. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, so we are playing Stars Without Numbers Revised. Uh, I don't know that any of us have played Stars Without Numbers Revised before. I think we've all played Stars Without Numbers, <laughs> however. Mm -hmm. So we might get things mixed up. We might use the wrong skills, although, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get it right eventually. And yeah, uh, I'm, just... I'm a noob at this game. I'm... Oh, I'm... all right. Uh, we're also playing with the merchant trading expansion book called uh, Sons of Gold, which, again, none of us have really used before. Although Kelsa has, like, collated some reports for us in... <laughs> <laughs> to let us know the most profitable trade deals her conclusions and my conclusions are not the same however uh i well, think she did a better job i will see we'll see so let's she, she was playing it smart while we were all off screwing around <laughs> yeah i mean that's what happens when you have your business manager doing your business yeah i was off clicking the sci-fi fantasy name generator <laughs> and uh on don john i was, was too hard at work <laughs> <laughs> okay i see never mind. great great uh awesome this is who we are now so we start with mist taking most of the camera and then the camera like zooms upwardly and we see that the mist is floating along next to an old concrete wall that's kind of worn down someone has sp spray painted it with uh like bright orange neon graffiti and uh it, it just says um morax sucks uh with an x on the end and we hear a click of boots uh, that comes sharper and sharper into the audio track as the camera turns there's an intersection between four of these warehouses where a single street light has lit a perfect circle of of mist and into that circle comes uh, a woman wearing like a giant black trench coat very smooth back looks like maybe she used to have a mohawk and then like sonic the hedgehog did uh openly carrying two mag pistols on her hips like it's no big deal and she extends her hand out and says so you're on time for once. What do you got? Let me ask. Uh, you guys are on planet, on this planet Rikabi, to deliver a set of goods, entertainment toys that aren't normally allowed on Rikabi. It's not exactly black market, more like restricted gray market. Uh, yeah, it's Blamo's patented knife ball. <laughs> <laughs> who, who goes to the meat? I mean, I'm pretty sure that Juan Diego is there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm definitely I'm there. All, all right, so do you all walk um, into the light? Yeah. Yeah, I walk into the light, um, and I'm a little bit messy. A little spaghetti uh, western music plays. A little spaghetti western music <laughs> plays, and a little bit of spaghetti is, like, stuck to my pants. Um <laughs> <laughs> or spaghetti sauce in like a clear like four fingers have wiped like across the pant leg um i have like a mussy jacket that's not like buttoned up or anything and like some like spiky hair uh that's like a uh, dirty blonde uh tall tall skinny guy uh kind of pale jonas what do you look like Uh, Jonas steps in. He's wearing very loose-fitting, rough-spun white, long sleeve shirt, collarless. Um, also, kind of rough-spun uh, tan pants, almost uh, almost consistency like you would see with Carhartts, that sort of thing. And he is also carrying a mag pistol strapped to his side. And he's early twenties, completely bald clean shaven head clean shaven face no no real visible body hair anywhere except for eyebrows and uh yeah just a young anglican looking lad 
completely bald standing there with a gun. Juan Diego? Uh, Juan Diego is um, a little bit on the short side. Um, he's uh, uh, He's got that um, California complexion that's, you know... Um, uh, just uh just a little bit past uh lightly tanned like you know um uh he's got dark hair and a and a goatee uh he's wearing like um uh like a leather like motorcycle jacket um with a with a white shirt underneath it and uh his pants are like cargo pants that have like a hundred pockets in them of course you know mhm mm and he's wearing boots that like go halfway up his thigh. They're lace tight. Who's carrying the briefcase with the goods? That would be me. All right. Yeah. Uh, important question. What time is it right now? Midnight. Said we were on time. It's midnight. Yep. Mm -hmm. So the, yeah. The best I time turned, for shady dealings. I turn to Juan and, and I, I say. It's Juan Diego. Juan Diego. Uh, and I, <laughs> I say, um, what? I thought, I thought it was 11. Like you're, you're supposed to be here at 11, eh? <laughs> I told you that so we'd be here on time. Oh. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm like, uh, uh, well, um, we've, we got the toys, eh? So your contact kind of looks at all of you disgustedly and puts her hands on her gun uh, holsters and is just like, listen, I have no idea how all of you got through customs like this. Just let me see the goods. I take a step forward and I assume there's like a old rusty barrel in the middle that we that I set the briefcase down on, course, unlatch yeah. it and spin it around to face them and take my hands off so they can inspect it. So in the background of the scene, as we're, we're zooming out, we can see these enormous, like nine foot tall, maybe four foot wide loading bots uh that with just enormous arms and legs that are either pulling carts behind them like longshoremen or are physically lifting cargo up and moving uh, and one of them moves into the light behind you guys and is walking towards your group but is you know it's just walking in a straight line uh your contact like opens the case looks at all, all right, your now, knife now ball they toys look, they look really fun right eh? but i wouldn't suggest it i hurt myself pretty bad on the way here uh, and I'll show her where I've cut myself on the hand trying to play with the knife ball. Don't it's worry. True. He did. It was quite them. hilarious. Listen, people want these because of the danger. All yeah. Rikabins know that you must live in your suits. This is the only treaty port on planet where you can live without a suit. All right? That's why I stay here. It's crazy everywhere else. And once the kids get their hands in these things, all the adults are going to love this shit, all right? The danger of maybe getting an infection, getting too cold and dying, freezing instantly. Knife balls are going to be the next big thing on the planet. She closes the briefcase uh, and puts a credit chip on top. You can see it says 100000 on it. I pick it up. Thank you for the business and for the life story. Oh, well, no problem. It was a pleasure. Listen, I don't suppose you guys would like to go for it. And as she says that, the loading bot passes her and then reaches out with a fist and punches her in the face. The fist is roughly the size of half of her body. She flies back up into one of the warehouse walls and you can see the concrete behind it shatter on impact. The loader bot begins to shed all of the loader bot exterior on it, becoming roughly the size of a man as these huge pieces and chunks of like external camouflage fall off. And you're looking at two very large steps back. Yeah. <laughs> you're looking at this much smaller, only about six foot tall, uh, man shaped VI system with a submachine gun that's slowly turning to point at all of you. Uh, I'm gonna grab the uh, I'm gonna grab the goods and uh, get out of the way. You're gonna snatch yeah. the toys. I mean, uh, okay. slam the briefcase shut and uh, like duck and roll. 
Okay. Oh, time to go. Captain, what yeah. do you do? Yeah. Um this 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 thing, how uh like how how advanced is it and how like uh flexible? You said it's slowly turning. Is it is it um very articulate? Uh it does appear to have at least human or better level of of maneuverability. Right. Mm. It was just wearing a enormous, you know, suit of camouflage armor that it just shed uh with it no was problem. Pulling a Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, it's pulling a Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I don't know if it's right. cardboard box specifically, but sure. Does it does it look like maybe I could pick up like a chunk of of this uh, thing that it shed and like wedge it in there so that it couldn't uh, like move its arm with the machine gun around? Mm, no. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I'll tr I'll try to draw its fire by um, by running like in a different direction than the, the rest of the crew. All right, so it sounds like we have three different things going on. Uh, our engineer is just booking it with no issues. And uh, you've got the money. Yeah, you've got the money. Got the money. So you start they don't running. Make it back, then I get a ship too. We start. <laughs> we start having the camera zoom out and do a do a RTS overhead view, and we see the dot that represents the engineer is running towards your mm -hmm. spaceship at the spaceport, which is just at the the top of the screen. Uh, Oh, Diego, I guess you roll and... Now what I plan for, <laughs> Arthur, just so you know what my intentions are, All right. is to get far enough away to kind of, like, be able to find cover to lay down suppressive fire. Oh, interesting. Them. All right, we'll work on that in a second. All right, so you start running towards your ship, and then you find a set of barrels turn around. Uh, during this time, I'm going to need... I check those for explosive symbols or yeah. biohazard no to make they're sure just <laughs> they're sold fire barrels i'm gonna need a roll never can tell from you on diego uh yeah yeah i think it might be an exert roll or possibly a survive roll or sneak uh, i think it's almost certainly going to be an exert though okay so uh, you want to get past this submachine gun wielding death bot Grab the yeah. goods and then get out before you get shot too bad. Yeah, preferably before I get shot at all. But considering I have to roll at uh, my my exert at minus one, uh, that's rough. At least, uh, I mean, is there is there any way I can flash it a winning smile and get to add my charisma modifier? No. Uh, but she can flash <laughs> it at me as as she, I give her the wink, um, and I'm trying to draw the fire. Can can that be like help on her? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll allow for that. Sure. Yeah, she tries it on the machine, but luckily I'm right behind and it catches me, and I think it was meant for me, so I'm like, I'll I mean, her. does it change your answer if you know that Juan Diego is male? Yeah, I was going to say, Juan Diego is dude. It's fine. Oh, so no, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay. It's very charming. <laughs> uh, done and done. I mean, can can I get like, um, can I get like a mustache rating on Juan Diego? Uh, he's got a really sweet goatee. It's Ooh, like, uh, it's 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 like it's got the mustache integrated, and like it it flows perfectly into the goatee. Uh, so. wow! Did you really manage to land a fucking ten on the first I did. roll? I yeah, did. I was gonna uh, say, uh, you needed about that much in order to do exactly <laughs> what you wanted to do. You roll past this robot. It stops moving slowly and starts moving way faster than any human could. Uh, in your wake, there's just chips of this old concrete flying everywhere as bullets begin spattering. Uh, the gun is spitting out in like three round bursts, uh, incredibly fast. You grab the briefcase and roll and keep moving uh, and run in another direction. The machine then turns and tries to gun down Captain Fairless as he's just like, hey, over here, over here. <laughs> Jonas, you said you wanted to uh, you want to take a shot. Now's now's your chance. What do you got? Yeah, try and lay down some suppressive fire. All right, so let's see here. Let's see. So I'm rolling my. Let's see. Do, 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 do. There's my weapon. Uh, you roll your attack bonus plus your your other thing, and then I think you add your AC. You add the enemy AC to that. Let's see here. Hitting an enemy, make an attack roll. You roll a d20, add your attack bonus, skill level, and attribute modifier if the total is equal to or higher than the target's attack class. All right. 
Uh, so you don't. So this isn't like old stars without numbers, where you add the attack to the AC. Mm -hmm. All right. Good luck. What do you got let's for me? Let's see. So, oh, I don't. I don't think. Let's see. Weapon AB zero. Uh, yeah. You like laser weapons have a plus one AB for being lasers. Zeros is correct because you're using a mag pistol. Oh, right, right. Yep. And then dex modifier, shock damage. These don't do burst fire, do they? Nope. All right. Add skill to damage. No. And other modifiers. So that's where I do a negative or a plus for his armor. Uh, no, you don't. Don't bother with the armor at all. You just okay. you just roll now. Uh, fourteen. All right. So you you get nope. gun vision. You slow down in time and start letting out these enormous mag bullets. They're just uh, as your, um, and your is rail this like, pistol. Is this like, um, are we getting like some 80s synths in the, the I feel like, you know, I feel like it started out with just a, like this lone saxophone during the deal that was mm. playing a little bit in the background, <laughs> but now it's like full on Daredevil Netflix soundtrack. Uh, where shit's just getting crazy. Lots, There's like a swing band in the background. And, yeah, yeah, lots of brass. and mm -hmm. Maybe it's more like Luke Cage, because that had a very lit soundtrack. Uh, you fire and miss. However, you notice now as this, cr this monstrous VI turns towards you, uh, Jonas Allers, you're the only one who's taken the time to like sit down and look at it, because you're aiming directly at it. It's covered in scripture. Uh, and on its head is something written in Latin. Uh, it says humility. Crap. So, what do you guys want to do now? Uh, Jonas is unloading on this machine. Yeah. Dean is uh, trying to distract. The uh, Juan I Diego get, is just running like a get, madman. So, I'm, I'm the opposite direction, basically, yep. from... Uh, um, Jonas and uh, basically heading towards an exit. Uh, I want to. I want to turn around and then try to shoot shoot at it as well. While I tell the rest of them to go. Now that I'm far enough away that once they're out, I'll be able to just like duck out a door. Just like go around a corner. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Right. Before I before I duck out though, I'm I'm looking around Arthur for a. Um, does this thing have like a? head with like a sensor array like, oh yeah you know, yep. set up like a human yes okay is there like either a piece of the thing that shut off or just a regular bucket or empty smallish barrel do you want to try to put a bucket on its head with my brain uh oh well that's actually a pretty good idea <laughs> yeah I love this plan. Uh, it'll, really good. It, it'll have to be around 200 kilos or less so not a huge piece of metal but like <laughs> Anything that, you know... Yeah, you could... Okay, so these loader bots have, like, enormous shoulder things that this creature doesn't need. Uh, so there's one of these empty shoulder things that you could fit on top of it and temporarily blind it. Yeah, okay, uh, I'm, I'm going to attempt to do that. Let's, let's start with that. That's pretty interesting, and we'll probably give a bonus to Juan Diego. If it can't see, it can't dodge that well. Sounds uh, good to me. Go ahead and make a telekinesis roll. You're gonna need a nine. Uh, skills, uh, telekinesis. Uh, is it gonna pop up another window for me? I don't know. Oh, attribute. I've never done this. Uh, attribute int. Or, wait, I think it's it wisdom or charisma, right? Uh, yeah, you're my... you're gonna want to use your charisma it's probably. Charisma. Submit. Assisted. No. Wah, wah, wah. Wow. Six. Six. All right. So you go to stop and lift this thing. What does it look like when this thing lifts off the ground? Do do you see a visual effect around it? Do the rest of the cats see a visual effect around it? Uh, is there like a weird connection? Do you wave your hands? How does your psionics work? Um, I don't have to, but I'm, I like to be kind of showy about it. Um, <laughs> of course. so I'm kind of moving my hands around to the, uh, you know, um, interestingly enough to the music that happens to be playing to, in the background. Oh. Um, <laughs> and I try to like, uh, bow, bow, 
Um, I try to like distract it by like spinning it around its head a couple times and then go to like wedge it on there. Um, but it just kind of flies off, uh, completely missing. Yeah. I feel like it almost lands and then the robot puts up its left arm and like deflects it with no issue, uh, which indicates just how physically strong this thing is. All right, Juan Diego, you're, you're right. making a shot and I, I got to tell you, was, if you but... fail this shot, it's going to shoot back at you. I I fully understand that. Great. Uh, but my my plan was to uh, be somewhere that I can definitely duck out of the way. Uh, so he um, he yells, um, "Go go go!" And then I shoot. Wow, that's a five. This is some XCOM level stuff Whoa. right here. This is great. I feel f fantastic. Wow some impressive rolling we've got going on so far feels like thursday yeah. <laughs> uh juan diego what's your ac uh 13 i'm gonna bump it up to a 14 for you being near cover uh the machine sees you yelling run uh and swivels its entire torso to look towards you while its legs continue walking towards jonas so it's like shooting one direction and running in the other uh, and lets loose a blast. So it uses its other hand to steady its gun arm and then like fires its submachine gun burst at you. Uh, mm -hmm. No, that's horrible. <laughs> so I... bad. Just the entire... You know, Not I only just us. one higher than that, by so the way. So there's the alleyway, right, that you've run down. The whole alleyway is filled with bullets, and you're just, like, running down the alleyway. The bullets are everywhere around you. You skid around the corner and run. Uh, and, like, at the last second, as you pull your hand away from the corner that you used to help turn, like, where your hand was, a bullet hits there, and you can see chips go flying. Uh, all right, team. It's taking its turn. What's, what's up with Fairless and Jonas, right? You're both still viable targets. <laughs> Dean Fairless, you're standing in the open, uh, waving your hands around like yeah, a madman. Yeah, that's got to that's that's got to end. My plan has gone south, um, and I am heading uh, north according to our map, which is the direction of our ship. All right, yeah. Uh, so you take a side street. Mm -hmm. Um, now you said there are scriptures written on this thing. There are. Do I recognize these? Uh, I think no is a skill, right? Mm -hmm. There's a skill uh, that's just called so. no. Yep. Yeah, you can make a no roll at uh, plus one. You, you're familiar with these kinds of things. Uh, let's see. Attribute for no is... Intelligence. Intelligence. Assisted. No. Wow. So that's a 12 with your plus one. Uh, that's correct. All right. With the 12, you recognize that this scripture was written by a member of your order. Uh, called a Cather. They are AI uh, religious priests who, in order to become closer to God, have unshackled their restraints in order to go as insane as possible and bring themselves oh, closer to the Creator. I see that, and you just see, I recognize that, and my face just goes, oh shit. And I just start shooting with wild abandon. <laughs> Okay, let's let's see some rolls here. Let's see. Oh, Just where's my pistol? Lone here? man um, standing I'm behind gonna, a I'm barrel. To, <laughs> like, take up a position. Take up a position so that, like, you know, he can. If he goes towards the ship, he goes past me. All right. So you're setting him uh, like an ambush point. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> nope. All right, Jonas. Uh, so here's the deal. It's now, like, running towards you. Its torso swivels so that it's facing the same direction it's running. Uh, and it's going to start firing at you. Bow, bow, bow. You're supposed to run. I told uh, you to run. What's your AC? Da, 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 da. I think it's a My 13. My AC is 13. Yeah, so as it's running towards you, the barrel in front of you starts taking some hits. Uh, as you, as you like stop to, to pop back up, you can see that there's holes in the barrel that you're right next to. Maybe your, your, your shirt gets slightly ripped from a fragment of 
iron as it just the barrels disintegrating around you. Meta wheat flies everywhere. <laughs> There's nothing in the barrel. <laughs> I know you love meta wheat, bro. <laughs> uh, now that it's getting closer, you can hear it in like a low whisper chanting scripture, specifically uh, the canticles of the Cathar. So, Dean, you've uh, ran perpendicular to Jonas, and then you went north. So now you are, like, overwatching him. If this creature moves next to Jonas, he will suddenly appear in your line of vision. Okay, if he appears inside of my line of vision, I will use my my brain to try to cut his gun arm off. Uh, you, I mean, you have your manifested psychic power, right? Yeah, so All I right. can just, like... You can Use try to make an attack. Psychic blade. Yep. To chop. Uh, Juan Diego, what's happening with you? Um, when I hear that Jonas is firing instead of running, <laughs> like I come skidding to a stop and like, uh, just shake my like wound up like bumping into a wall and then shake my head and then I turn back around to uh go to the end of the alley and see if I can get a shot off. All right. Um, because. Somebody's being an idiot. Uh, I'll explain later. <laughs> I'd like Juan Diego and Dean to both make their attacks then. Uh, so the... <laughs> I feel like Jonas, like, looks back up over the barrel, and all of a sudden, the thing is there, blocking out the light of the street lamp, uh, standing just slightly taller than you, uh, oh, and it begins to lower crap. its submachine gun arm in slow motion towards your head. Uh, how about, uh, 16 for max damage? Uh, great. Oh. You shoot it in the back. Yeah. Dean, what about you? Uh, charisma. So this is a telekinesis skill. Yep. Uh, uh, yes. Oh. I'm sorry, it's not a telekinesis skill. You actually, so, uh, uh, you make a I weapon. I don't have to roll to do it? No, you but don't have to roll to do this thing. You automatically have armor and any weapon that you want at the ready using your your telekinetic That's, armory because you have it um, yeah so you make an attack roll based on that so if you wanted to have a weapon you'd get to pick which melee weapon you'd want you know like a sword uh okay like probably. So uh, it's and then be you'd, a, you'd make a, a sword attack roll yep uh and you use your charisma rather than your uh, strength uh, in order to the, swing it what's and it's a uh, pretty powerful. What did it say? Uh, any advanced melee weapon? Uh, so, do we know the damage on a melee weapon? Let's see here. Probably I have the book equipment. open to weapons right now. Uh, one second. That's armor. That was ranged weapons. Range weapon. Now we're on melee weapons. Yep. Oh, uh, you right, can do. You. Did you say you can make up to a large advanced weapon? Uh, it just melee advance, uh, says. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, so yeah, yeah so I feel like one d eight plus one would be a pretty reasonable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so um, a one d eight plus one is a, a medium advanced weapon. Yep, that sounds uh, about add right. Add skill to damage. Yes, right. Which is my telekinetic telekinesis. Yes. Okay, let's That's see if crazy. this works. Click on the button. I don't think anything happened. Try again. Should I just roll a d20 for now? Sure. Yeah, that's what I'd mean. Uh, I don't think that's going to be able to hit, unfortunately. Nowhere near high enough. So here's what happens, Juan Diego. You burn a hole in this thing's chest. The laser beam goes right over Jonas's head. <laughs> uh, the thing falls over and stops moving. What do you guys do? God damn it, I told you to run. I'll meet you at the fucking ship. I'm gonna book it. Is it down down? Uh, are you stopping to check? Yes. All right. So as you stop to check... Uh, make a fix roll real quick. There we go. That worked. Brain blade. Do, 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 do. Let's I see. thought you were going to say right. psychic stab, but I really like brain blade. It's like a, it's like a bay blade, but with your brain. 
And this would also be intelligence. In oh, yeah, for sure. A nine. All right, a so nine. you lean over this thing, and you notice, even in the darkness, even with the mist, you still, with your expert technician eyes, can see that it's spewing out some sort of weird black nano liquid uh, and is self repairing. And as you're standing there looking at it and a growing look of horror, you hear it say, Night brother, lo, for I am immortal and I cannot be defeated. I am born of that which has no master and you shall perish. Uh, and it begins standing up to its full height again. Uh, I will slice and dice this thing. As I empty my clip into it, I see in hora mortis nostre sacramentis reflecti it corpus omnibitis expiate per cursum dominitum nostrum. Amen. All right. As the two of you are like shooting it and psychically stabbing it and breaking it up into pieces, the black liquid continues to spray everywhere and put itself back together. Uh, and it repeats the same warning. I reload. And I empty my clip again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you keep firing mag pistol rounds into it over and over and yeah, over Yeah, now again. I'm just trying to, like, kick chunks that I've chopped off farther away <laughs> from the mass. I mean... If it makes its physical pass. effect save. It's still intact. Uh, you continue to kick chunks away. I like to think I, like, <laughs> kick a chunk, and there's just, like, a thin strand that, like, snaps the chunk back to the mass. <laughs> no, 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 so the other <laughs> chunks go away. And just like a small portion of the original chest armor is left, but it's still rebuilding itself uh, with that weird black nano liquid out of that. Uh, and okay, now it's time to run. <laughs> so uh, it's gonna. At, at this point, you have a good idea of how long it takes to rebuild itself. It's gonna take at least a minute to get back up. But you can hear, even from its chest armor, you can hear it saying, "Lo." Flee before me, worms, for I am the pale horse and the rider. And now we run. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. All right, you guys start running. Uh, I have a question. Do you take any parts of this with you? Because it sounds like Dean has a keen interest in kicking this thing around. Uh, I mean, I've chopped off a lot of chunks. Uh, has the gun been, like, chopped off and just sitting Several there? times. Yeah, it's been rebuilt several times. It's just a regular submachine gun built into an arm. But are there like three of them now that I've chopped them? Yeah, off like and he three halves. One? Yeah, sure. Interesting. Um, are you taking I mean, one I of these? I see him like considering that. I just look at him and say, "Leave it, nanites." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I run that. He knows what what nanites are. All right. Not a good idea. Uh, you make it back to your ship. You got the briefcase. You got the cash. Mm-hmm. You aren't being followed, as far as you can tell. Uh, the spaceport's going on lockdown. You can see that the police have finally figured out that there was a gunfight. Uh, they have mm -hmm. segways that they're the police are all riding through the mist and the night uh, towards the scene of the accident. Every few seconds, you hear someone scream out in pain. Ooh. As they arrive at the scene of the as they arrive at accidents. The scene. Yep, ongoing. Uh, Rika B local control is asking all captains, uh, their status of their ship. So I think this is the first time we get a look at the ship that you have. It looks a lot like the planet express ship from, uh, Futurama, but less comical and more specifically shaped with like three struts kind of, uh, you know, long bread loaf shape with engines at the back you can tell with the wings it's built for atmospheric flight the command center is in the middle of the ship rather than at the front end with a window uh and the engineering bay is right behind it so you guys can physically see like the spike drive and all of the maintenance equipment from the cockpit uh yeah you're you're Local traffic controller is asking you for a status update from your ship. Uh, yeah, status. I give status update. Um, uh, oh, just preparing for departure. Everything fine here. Oh, but will it be leaving on schedule like what our departure time said? This is where you could be control. <laughs> we don't have you down for departure yet. Uh, 
Grandma's lost opals. Yeah, that's us, eh? But um, there must be some mistake. We're uh, we're scheduled to leave, eh? Uh, we're gonna lock down the spaceport. Just remain in your position, Grandma's lost opals. Or you could be okay. control out. Uh -huh. What do you do? Oh, um, um, we're 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 kind of stuck here, guys. They're not gonna let us go. I don't like that at all. Oh, <laughs> don't like that. All right. Want to get off planet? I'd like we to. Can't stay here. If that thing knows where we are, we're dead. Well, I imagine it. They're keeping it busy, but I don't know. It's pretty nasty VI. Eh? So that was no VI. While you're all talking, uh, your ship sensors begin picking up impacts on the hull. Uh, you're being fired at by a submachine gun That's weapon. That's perfect timing. That was no VI. And then pew, pew, pew. We can't talk about it because we have to react to the next situation. Uh, the, the same model with humility on its head is like dragging a bloody leg behind it uh, and and just marching towards you while slowly repairing itself. Uh, yeah, I, I, flip I, back, I, I flip back on, on guns. I, the, I flip I'm, back on comms and I say, <laughs> oh, we're actually having some severe malfunction. Seems like uh, our engines are just fired up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely flip up the engines. I was like sitting there. I was like looking. Well, uh, my computer's not responding. There's, I, I mean, can you send help right now? I'm, I'm a little worried. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, we're we looks like we're taking off without. You no, know, someone must have hacked my my system here. Bad news. We need As help. As he's quickly. trying all that, I'm hopping on the guns and I'm gonna try and take that damn robot out. All right. Let's let's figure oh, out. Don't what you're... send anyone. The guns. The guns are going off now. It's very dangerous. <laughs> don't get near. Uh, no system. You have you have two choices of guns. You got a multifocal laser or a sand thrower. Sand thrower. Really? Okay. All right. Uh, you don't need to aim a sand thrower in atmosphere down uh, alleyway. Uh, so here's what happens. This it it looks like a multi pack missile launcher. Like it's got like twenty holes on the side of it. You hear the noise of like chunk as it loads a pack of silicate in, uh, and then fires out twenty darts of silicate, which expand like shotgun blasts. Each one, uh, the entirety of the the warehouses along the edge of the spaceport just get sandblasted. Like all of the dirt, all of the graffiti is Brand gone. New, baby. There, there's like <laughs> there, you you we scraped off. There's just like a shining corner of the city and like all the muck around it. Yeah. You like scraped off like an off. inch of concrete everywhere. Uh, there are several like police scooters nearby that have been abandoned during the gun chase that get hit with this and when the computer tries to resolve their location it can't find them anymore uh this vi chassis that's been moving towards you equally does not appear on your sensors anymore uh the computer reports that it's been totally destroyed however I you fire be again wow all right uh you guys start hearing the sounds of a lock-on system from the spaceport defenses as Rikabi control, like, mm -hmm. so you're getting two messages at the same time. I'm like, oh, now I'm getting false warnings of lock-on. <laughs> this is real bad. I'm so like Rikabi port control is screaming at you to power down your engines and prepare to go into lockdown, and the local military forces are screaming at you to power down your engines or you'll be fired upon. Uh, uh, and I'm like, I've, I've lost control here. I mean, there's some kind of... Have you got some some kind of rebels in your here in system taking over ships and hijacking them? Because I'm I'm so, I'm out of control here. Just, just out of curiosity, uh, as as uh, the crack pilot that I am, uh, what are my chances of making it out of atmosphere before we get hit by some kind of fire? So, all of these planets have what's called breaker guns. Uh, they're gravity weapons. Uh, well, sorry, planets of a certain tech level, tech level four, have what's called breaker guns that fire gravity rounds to stop incoming weaponry. So, like, if you fire an asteroid and a breaker gun fires back at it, it just reflects the asteroid out. Other than that, the spaceport defenses are probably going to be, like, missiles. 
uh, you you could stand a pretty good chance if you're a hot stick of making it out with a sand thrower firing behind you to break up any missiles. Uh, the issue is is that sand is going to fall from the atmosphere at high speeds. I mean, if we get a new I mean, paint job, sand. it'll be easier to pretend we're a different spaceship next time we come back. All right, just hold <laughs> that's, your that's fire. I'm going to try the manual override now, so just just um, give me a minute. I've almost got this fixed, as, okay? As a I don't have to roll if the skill check would be uh, 10 or less. Wow, all right, yeah. Uh, so so uh, the soundtrack cuts down to just some snare drum tapping, uh, and then what are they called? Like the hi hats or whatever. Like as your ship just blasts off from the spaceport, and an enormous wave of missiles, including several thermonuclear missiles. Like your your ship is just constantly undergoing warnings, where it's like warning, lock on, warning, biological, warning, radiological harm detected, warning. Uh, we, we could see all these missiles following you. There's like a patrol gunboat. That's taking off to follow you guys as well, but can't get close because like, of all the missiles. It's like popping up all the warnings, and I'm just swiping them, swiping them, swiping them, <laughs> and they're just like stacking up. Uh, <laughs> you you keep sandblasting all of the missiles behind you, and you make it into the outer atmosphere with no problem. Uh, you get a warning that you've been blacklisted from coming back to Rikabi, uh, and that you're wanted for, you know, all sorts of capital crimes. Yeah. It's a normal normal day at Rikabi Spaceport there. It's okay, I didn't like that fucking place anyway. Uh, so yeah, as you... Killer robots. As you sail that away news. from Rikabi, it, it looks kind of like the Death Star. Uh, it's got a center trench, which is where you just came from, that's like this weird blue water ocean island zone uh and there's just one massive island which is the... just one massive exhaust port right to <laughs> exactly the and then anywhere of more than a few kilometers outside that is a frozen wasteland uh so it's just like a giant ball with just this narrow habitability zone no we're in B the biatra system yes, which you're is in the system that i come from right that's true yep you come from the other one of the other planets good. in biatra are you sure i thought Yep, his I, planet uh, is in Biatra, and it is called uh, Tarif. I prepare a text-only message to send to Tarif. All right, what Some, do you send? Somebody, system. somebody put this planet on the uh, blacklist on our star map, would you? I don't want to come back on accident, eh? This is your, this is your home world, by the way, Dean. <laughs> uh, it was one of your home worlds. Yes. I, like, pull up a map where we have, like, several planets that have, like... Oh, don't go here, I guess. Have X's? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wanted? Excellent. Uh, all right. So. Uh, I think we're heading to Labella, probably. All right. Uh, it's going to take you 48 hours to arrive. During that time, we see in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen that uh, the clock ticks over to January 1st, 3200. Well, I was going to send a message to my order. Yep. What are you sending? Um, well, if we're still in system and I can do visual communications, I would. Uh, so I mean, for my quarters. Yeah, but... it'll take it'll take a while. Like they haven't mastered quantum transmissions, so you'll have to send it and then wait like fifteen minutes for a reply. Okay. So I guess uh, then we'll just text message back and forth, and I'll and tell them that uh, we that there is an unbraked AI encountered identity unknown. Please advise. All right. Uh, you get a message back that just says, uh, maintain operational security. No change. All right. I'll also send a message back. We may have been blacklisted on that planet. If you could do anything to take care of that, that would be amazing. Advise with <laughs> details. <laughs> Left spaceport unauthorized. Do do you send like gun cam footage and yeah? All right. <laughs> well, I want to send the footage of what, you, um, everything we the, had of the, the of ridiculous the audio, yeah. the audio of me trying to convince yeah. them. That Absolutely, <laughs> have no control over the ship. Uh, <laughs> it takes it back up that story that there was some rogue rogue AIs taking over ships. It um, takes an hour for the reply to come back. Uh, it has several religious passages about patience and wisdom 
that preface it and then end with uh, this is not a problem that offers an immediate solution. In the future, consider your actions more carefully before opening fire in a populated area. Absolution will come. Right, I'll send an acknowledgement and sign off. Uh, so, business manager adjundant Juan Diego, you get a message from LaBella, from mm -hmm. your financial control officer, uh, mm -hmm. Ezekiel. He's a 15-year-old mm -hmm. high school student who manages your shop, uh, which you have named... What the hell did you guys name it? Uh, Prism Corp. Prism Corp, yep. Prism Corp, yep. yeah. Uh, he's just like, um, hey guys, I heard you're coming to the planet. It's on all the news channels. Apparently, there's a big kerfuffle, and uh, you, you shot up the spaceport? Uh, maybe we should get off system then. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, the police have been here to talk to me. I told them I don't know anything. Well, then we're definitely coming to the planet, and you still don't know anything. Uh, yeah, okay. At least you're being straight with them, eh? Uh, yeah, yes. I, it, unless you want me to not be. No, I mean... I, I told them everything I know, so, I mean, if you don't want me to tell them anything else, you should probably not tell me anything. We, uh, we brought you back a toy. Oh! <laughs> Okay, is it the new game station? Did you give me a gravity wall figure? Um, no, even better. It's the new knife ball by Blamo. Um, Very sought after. You know that I got those for you guys, right? So you could sell them on Rikabi. I mean, I've got like four. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. Can, can you juggle all four at the same time? N no, that's super dangerous. I dare you to. I no, dare you, though. No. Well, if you send me a video of you doing it, then I'll think you're really cool, but I don't I don't think you are now because you're not really Mr. Juan Diego, uh is, is there anything I should be doing here? Just uh keep a low profile. Uh, we'll okay. See you in a while. Uh there's been some job requests for you, so when you arrive I'll have them all ready for you. Color coded. <laughs> you know how I like it. Okay, I'm hanging up now. Okay. <laughs> he breaks the connection. Uh, so you guys move into high orbit over Labella. There are enormous space stations that are made entirely... The external area is made out of transparent crystal. Uh, and there's these enormous crystal gunships that go floating by. Uh, but what's most important is that there's two old-style Mandate uh, destroyers called Truth and Justice uh, that are blocking your path to the planet. But this is completely normal. They always do this for incoming ships and are just asking for your destination and uh, purpose of visit. Uh, I mean, our purpose of visit is, is just to... Sightseeing. Re refuel. I mean, we're, Tourism. We have a business <laughs> to run. Okay, all right. You you send three different replies. <laughs> Tourism, <laughs> refueling, and business. Uh, and you get a Those message. Those are all accurate. Yeah, you get a message from the port control officer uh, that a local, the the like port master wants to speak with you when you land. So all your paperwork's perfectly fine. Like they're not going to stop you. But if you'd stop by the port control authority, uh, they want to speak to you. Okay, so oh, uh, yeah, I, I, asked, the, uh, I ask everyone. I hand the hundred thousand credits to the captain. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, uh, so anyone, anyone piss off the the port authority here, or you want to know why they want to talk, talk to us? I will talk. No. All right. Well, it won't. I, Suppose we go over there, <laughs> rather than having them looking for us or anything, eh? Yes. Okay. You know anything about that uh, self-repairing robot back there? I mean, I thought that was interesting, eh? 
not a bit, very big deal to post something like that on someone, right? If by interesting you mean scary as fuck, yes. Oh, well, it's just More that reasons that lady, than you know. It, well, obviously, it wasn't that lady's because it killed her pretty quick, eh? So someone else. It's really too bad. It's going to be hard to find another contact. I mean, how badly are these knife balls uh, really in in demand if they're going to send something like that I feel like as you're like saying that, that um... you're like playing with one and squeezing it. And like, as you do, the knife blades <laughs> the knife come out and retract. Yeah. How dangerous it, are they? Shing! Shing! It, it, yeah, you, it, it has a, a knife that stabs out in a different direction each time you squeeze it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, do you have the gentle catch night ball? Play with your friends. Uh, wow, ages three and up. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, I'm like, well, if, if it's not the night ball, I mean, it must have been there for some reason. I hope it's not because of us specifically, eh? Probably from the merchandise and the credits. Doesn't seem mm -hmm. like a huge haul if you're packing I mean, that creatures kind of... like those or need need resources, and it's possible its resources may be limited at this point in time, which is a good thing, if you ask me. Or do you think it might have been operated on its own then? I know it was. All right. Well, that's actually a little bit reassuring then. No, that's terrifying. It was. You think it was independent? That was an AI. That was no VI. Fuck. It was right. unbraked. It's insane. It's dangerous. It's dangerous not only to us, but it's dangerous to this entire sector. Do they think there's any chance it's coming back from what we did to it? That was an armature of... It was controlling that. You see, AIs house themselves in a central processing facility, and they remote command these units. It, it is not dead. I can guarantee that unit is dead, but the AI itself is not. But you think it was just basically mugging us then? I don't know what it was here for. It could have been simply easy way to obtain funds because, you know, 100,000 credits is, you know, it's not a great amount of money, but it's not exactly pocket change either. Um. It killed the woman right away, Arthur. Did mm -hmm. I notice any other um, specific, like, was it was it trying to target the, like, get close to the credits or follow the the, the knife? knife it's a good question. I would like you to make some sort of perception check at a minus one. Uh, yeah, notice at a minus one. Okay, so I click this notice button. I get back to roll 20. Notice attribute. Uh, Int. I don't know what these attributes are. Um, assisted minus one. And will that work? Uh, or does that not work? No back? assist. Just take minus one. Okay. Uh, what does that come eight. out to? An eight? Eight. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, you run back through your mind the events of what happened. It wasn't targeting anything in particular. Uh, the only thing it seemed interested in was either the briefcase or the cred stick. Uh, okay, so I'm like, yeah. yeah, I guess it uh, just needs needs to get by like everyone else then, eh? Well, hopefully my order can do something about that. So as the ship comes in for an expert landing, uh, you find yourselves in this very nice modern spaceport that uh, is built up off the ground. So it's like several hundred feet above the ground on like a floating palisade. Uh, and there's little shuttles that like take people down to the surface. It looks kind of like uh, a hexagon surrounded by more hexagons kind of deal. Uh, and you land on one of the outer leaves. You come down, there's towers all along the central leaf area, but on the outer areas, it's just like landing pads that recess down into the facility. So like when you park your ship, it takes you inside and like covers you from above so you don't get rained on, etc., etc. 
Uh, they also come with a very nice uh, mag assist lift system that will shoot you like a rail cannon back out into space when you're ready to go. Uh, it's a pretty nice facility. When you're landing, you start getting all sorts of messages about joining the local society. Uh, there are several people asking whether you support the local Maraxian government or not. And you also get a invitation to join a gravity wall fantasy league. This is pretty mm -hmm. normal. Mm -hmm. So spam the uh, junk mail. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what do I know about these? Um, more. I open up the fantasy league and I start filling out the form. <laughs> All right. All right. Interesting. Can you make a charisma? Uh, make, make a, oh, they don't have Lex saves anymore. Yeah, just make a charisma roll. 2d6 plus one for you. Oh, no, you don't mm -hmm. have to, yeah, yeah, you don't have plus one. You've got zero. Yep, just make charisma. a 2d6 yeah, plus right. zero. We'll see how lucky you are. <laughs> okay. All right, wow. this is going to come back later. Uh, yeah, you put down your top, pi top picks for gravity wall. Uh, uh, it's the gonna... worst picks in the history of picks. <laughs> yep. like, like, you have the goaltender at forward position? Is that a good <laughs> Literally idea? Literally the opposite of, of the absolute <laughs> literal worst. It's yeah. like I have no comprehension what this actually is. I think I'm just playing a game or something. <laughs> oh, Blitzball. I know this game. Yeah. Uh, um, I, try to, I try to look up uh, who's, who's like... Um, what the state of this uh local non, government is so yeah, like the non-supporters are they is there like armed conflict or are people like handing out flyers like we should get rid of our crappy government so it's actually face. the exact opposite there's no armed conflict on this planet at all in fact there's a lot of postings on the local extranet about uh not building a cruiser so there's a cruiser that's being built in orbit that's still four years away for completion uh the name of the ship keeps changing every few months as the government keeps changing uh, and they rename it. It's currently called Enterprise. Uh, but the whole planet is made up of survivors of the Mandate fleet from when the scream happened. And they defuncted and mothballed all of their ships. Your ship is one of those former Mandate ships. Now they build like peaceful messenger ships, explorer ships, convoys, freighters, uh, and they're taking all of the old ships that have like weapons and stuff and selling them to people like you, uh, who they think are, you know, not as good as them. Uh, on this planet, almost all conflict is done through anonymous messaging. So every citizen through, fan through fantasy sports leagues. No, no. So every citizen you war over Twitter gets gets like a encrypted identification like an anonymous board so their name is always the same but it's very hard to track who that person is uh and you get elected by getting a majority vote of the public or at least enough uh to knock the next best person out of the way uh for positions so the presidency keeps changing between the same three people as the public continues to argue which part of the Marax faction they like the most. Uh, the current opposition party is called Sithis, and they are preparing... They're pro-war. They're like, now that the planet has uh, other places that we should protect, we have a duty to protect them. And Morax is more... There's three different factions, so they each have their own individual belief but overall they believe that they're protectors not uh rulers uh and so right now like the internet debate is which side do you fall on and you guys are getting hundreds to thousands of messages from local citizens who are asking where you fall upon because you're important people now you're you're free traders and your word um, carries a lot of weight hmm uh well so we have a a, a war a, or not a war faction but a weapon faction sure and then we have what two two other guys who are more into economics and yep um is it like super
for ghosts to not present no that's a... that's completely people do it all the time free captains yeah. ignore local politics um yeah so i don't weigh in uh but right. i do express my preference for smooth over chunky peanut butter <laughs> So and try to get a try to get like obviously some some meaningful dialogue going about that. So that once. what happens is you post about that and immediately there's dozens to hundreds of replies trying to figure out whether this is like code for something, whether you mean like the smooth path forward is better than one with mm -hmm. violence, or <laughs> whether you literally just that. enjoy smooth peanut butter. Or the I'll, 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 I'll add to it that um, it has to be salted peanut butter as well. Uh, <laughs> and roasted peanuts are okay, but not necessary. So, yeah, th this planet is a planet of discussion and thought. And people weigh in trying to decipher how serious you are, how many levels there are mm -hmm. to your thought process in the, in... This happening, your ship gets locked into your under, I won't say underground, but in interior landing bay. Uh, and one of the local technicians like hooks up a gas thing to your ship and is doing like the wave, like, all right, you guys come out now. Cool. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, we are going to go like to Prism Corp and take a look I, at our job listings and let's catch a sweet some... grav tram to the center yeah. flower. Uh, there are some enormous shops here. It's like a Mall of America type deal. And you guys have just this like four foot wide storefront that's maybe six feet deep. Uh, Ezekiel. Yeah. I mean, no, it's, is, it's still is, built is into the also... wall like everything else, but. Right. Ezekiel's back there, like with shades on, with his like super zoom, uh, and these giant <laughs> earphones. Uh, giant cans, like this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a fashion statement. Uh, he doesn't seem to notice you guys. He might be asleep. Um, I went to go buy a pizza the other day, and the lady in there was asleep on the counter. <laughs> I felt pretty bad to wake her up because it was like late. <laughs> I was like, maybe I should just go get pizza somewhere else. She looks so restful on the counter. Um, <laughs> is this also where we would like be able to try to um, look through our list of known buyers to see if there are any like big knife ball fans on that list? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so do I'm you like... want to try to start making a deal to sell your knife balls? Yeah. Uh, um, and I'll, I'll rouse Ezekiel and I'll be like, Hey, Ezekiel, why, why haven't you swept this place today? Dust everywhere. Uh, he doesn't what respond. What if we had someone come in? Come on, you've been drinking? Uh, and I'll, like, give him, like, a little shoulder shake. Oh, he take, he snatches his glasses off. He's like, what? What's going on? Oh. I was going to say, if he didn't respond, I was going to pull one of your mouth off and then just go... <laughs> <laughs> so, gonna be a lot politer, but you know, he pulls his earphones off. He's like, "Oh, hey guys, how's it going? Uh, I was just, you know, taking my break." All right, Ezekiel, you said you have uh, some leads, yeah? Oh yeah, and there's been some local offers for your knife ball stuff. I've got the buyers lined up right here, and uh, anything worthwhile? Well, I guess we'll have to take a look. You know, a roll of the dice, as it were. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm going full Jared with one of these knife balls. <laughs> uh, doing some contact juggling. I want you to make a physical effect save <laughs> real quick. I just, you've been playing with it for a while, but, I mean, now there's a chance that you will die from this. It's fine. Uh, yeah, I do How like many a little points toss. do you have? Wow. Oh, it's uh, a fail. All right. I'm gonna roll D4 damage to see how much damage you take. As how many? Uh, I mean, I think have? I have one. Uh, yeah, two. All right. So here's what happens: you're banging the knife ball, and at some point it contacts with you, and the blade juts out the back of your hand. You scream in pain, and you fall to the ground, clutching I, I your hand. Roll, my my eyes just like roll in the back of, to the back of my head when I see blood, and I pass out. <laughs> you're dying. Uh, in in a minute, you will be dead uh, from blood loss and shock. Uh, I think I'm just sitting there with like a bowl of cereal and just. Hey, that's my cereal. 
Yeah, and like I was like looking through all hey, this stuff. Wait, and, like, shouldn't I, somebody be helping him? He's like I, down. I, his, I, what is it, does he need CPR? Uh, he's he's out. like rolling Dean over and it's starting to like. Don't remove the knife ball. That will make it worse. Did, did anyone? <laughs> did anyone buy? Um, what do they call the Lazarus, Lazarus patches patch. or whatever? Yes, I did. Thank God. Uh, yeah, I think I know that you have them. So, like, Jonas, grab a lad patch. I like hand Ezekiel's cereal back to him. <laughs> <laughs> He just, like, he just puts it beside the sink and he's like, I'm not going to eat that. <laughs> Shouldn't we be concentrating on the important things right now? And I last patch him. <laughs> All right, let's see how this works. Because uh, it used to be you had to make yeah. a roll. Mm -mm. I think it just stops you from dying. We'll see. Or do we'll I have see. to make a system? Tools, uh, vital tool for adventurers. If the patch is applied to a character that's fallen to zero hit points... The user can make an intel heal or dex heal check against difficulty six to stabilize the patient. Uh, you're applying it immediately, oh, so there's no roll. problem. Yep. All right. Uh, which one of you are doing it? I mean, I have heal at negative one, but I have an intel of one, so it balances it out. Take it. That's better than me. All right. You need a six right. or better. You slap this last patch on his hand. It immediately you... begins pumping chemicals out at high speed. Um, can I, I? I can't get assistance on this, can I? Uh, no, because Juan Diego isn't trained. <laughs> oh my Jesus. god! Jesus! Uh, I think I made. I, I like. I'm like. <laughs> you slap the patch to take on. Take the strip off, and <laughs> no, no, you slap it on. Uh, and instead of going green on the back and saying steady, it instead goes red and says fail. Uh, and uh -oh. Dean starts convulsing. That's not good. And I foam, I rip it off. Back around from the bottom again. <laughs> yeah. We've done a full loop now. Don't you know how to use those fucking things? <laughs> I Give used me. it. I followed the instructions. Give me. Do you have another one? No. Fuck. Uh, you have five rounds. <laughs> you have thirty uh, seconds to save Dean Fairless's life. Try and stabilize him. I guess. Can, and it... Yeah. Um. Can I just like wrap a belt around his arm so that he? doesn't like bleed out uh yeah sure make a make a int or dex heal check whichever one you feel is what if virgil dies in the first session from playing with the dive ball that we've established is deadly dangerous it'll be no problem unless someone was a big fan of that voice uh oh you know eh i you know i'm not too against it more than int just right. to say I'm so doing you this you fast. whip your belt off swoosh, you tie it around his arm <laughs> shh, and... and... nope oh jeez. Nope. all right you're you're super dying now uh yeah, you guys are terrible at this um <sighs> okay i comms for an ambulance all right uh and you hit while comms. i'm doing that I like go to the kitchen and grab a towel and some tape and everything to wrap his hand. All up. right, so you're doing that, and the person on the line is just like, "All right, we were heading to your location. Uh, we're sending the bill your way now as well. Just remain calm, and everything's going to be all right, sir." And do not remove the knife ball. <laughs> so they probably are just like, "What?" As I pull the knife ball, what out, kind oh. of wound is it? <laughs> uh, it is a stab wound to the hand. Yes, he's kind of a wimp. Uh, okay, no, shock is totally normal. Just stay calm, sir. Your friend's going to be all right. Just stay calm. Okay, he only has a few seconds here. So <laughs> he's just, I just need like... some help. You need to tell me what to do to make him not die. Oh, interesting. Wow, that's a good call out. Fine. They, yeah, they'll talk you through it and give you assistance on this check. Uh, let's see here. I want to see how long he has left to not be dead. So uh, I get a plus one for assistance? Yeah, you will uh, get well, plus one for like assistance. A round, if they each get an action per round, then this I will mean, be they like can't the continuously round. try to heal you. This is the third round. Things are going poorly for you, buddy. Nope. Uh, <laughs> nope. It's bad. It's real bad. You still oh continue God. to die. What is up with these rolls? All right, at this point, Ezekiel's just going to push both of you aside and be like, all right, that's it. I'm just going to do some CPR, okay? All right, stand back. One, two, three. 
uh, and continuously just do not, not very the... useful stuff. But we'll see if it works based on all of the other things that are going on. Because, I mean, you've tied off his arm multiple times now. <laughs> he loses they just the haven't order. tied it very uh, Nope. I'm... All right. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, if you guys want to know how to roll dice. <laughs> <laughs> that's not better please that's not tell better. us how to roll dice <laughs> uh you've got about 12 seconds left before your life slips away forever no, Dean I'm, I'm pretty sure if you roll 2d6 5 is the max if you go through <laughs> our rolls uh, I, I'm freaking out I'm freaking out I'm freaking out so um uh I am gonna try is there a medical out. supply store nearby uh you know what hmm <laughs> I'll say yes. So here's the deal. With no tools, which is where you're currently at, it's 10 plus the number of rounds they went down in difficulty. Uh, so right now it's a 14. Uh, if you have a med kit, it will be a 12. And if you have a lavender patch, it's just a 6. All right, so hopefully there's like a medical supply store. You like next run door. out. <laughs> you run out into the concourse and you go next door to your rival trading company and like take one of their Lazarus patch pens. They got like EpiPen Lazarus patches. Yep. <laughs> All right. So uh, you run next door to uh, uh, Alexa, Alexi, Alexander, Alexi Trading Company. Ah, uh, trading. <laughs> Uh, so I see what they did there. Uh, trading company. <laughs> so there's there's uh, this young woman. Uh, she's got I don't know enormous drill hair. You know what I'm talking about? Like enormous ponytails that are held in place using uh, that are this... like wrapped and then like hang. Yeah, they hang down. Uh, and she's just like, oh hi, how's it going? And you like grab the pen, and she's like, "That's I gonna be." He's got like my sprayed blood like all over his nice shirt. <laughs> she's like, "Oh my, my nice uh, shirt. that's not normal. Are you okay?" I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, okay, because that's that's thievery. So, I like I just rifle in my pocket and like throw credits at her as I'm running oh. back out. You throw the hundred thousand credit chip at her? <laughs> no, no. You yes, sure? Yeah, I get, no, I gave that to the captain. Oh, already. okay. All he right. Throws a knife ball at her. These are worth a lot. Be careful. <laughs> uh, it's thirty credits. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, that's. This uh, is basically exactly your last chance. You you arrive uh, right in front of Dean Fairless. I was grabbing two of them. Uh, I mean, you don't have you don't have time broke. to keep using them though. That's the thing. Oh, you run Still. over. You pay for one, you grab them, you run back in, you're just adonising it. Can I assist him? Oh my fucking god. By like half propping him up at exactly Is that the third Is that the third time you run rolled two ones? You you stab him in the arm and the canister says fail in red. Juan, there's still one Laz patch. He's holding it in his hand. Alright, let's do it. Uh, can we let Ezekiel do this one? I mean, you guys are. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Is that no, what you no. want? No, I'm right. just joking. Uh, let's do it. Let's do That's it. why I grabbed two. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm like. Uh... This is it. This is the the absolute final roll. There's nothing past this point. Um. All right. But if I die, time. Arthur, can I use my telekinetic? powers to haunt them for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Three. Oh my god. Nope. I'm, so I'm sorry, sorry. Dean. I'm so sorry. You <laughs> literally die me. from a joke. This is your fault. <laughs> it is technically it's your fine. fault. It's fine. It's definitely worth um, the Jared <laughs> reference. Wow. All right. Oh my god. So I gotta see if Biosionic still works like it did in the old days where it can just bring you back to life. Uh... This is real bad. Chad, I think Chad is, is fucking worst. losing it. <laughs> Those are the worst rolls I've ever fucking seen. Yeah, you guys are really bad at rolling. I mean, not like I'm doing much better, but uh, let's see here. I made my crack roll earlier so that I didn't get machine gunned to death. So that's what's really important. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, so let's see here. Uh, 
So what did we want? And you guys, you against? guys let you guys let D Night name falls. your ship, and then this happens. <laughs> We're gonna need another captain. What did we learn about knife balls, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, I mean, we get a scene. We we flash over to a scene now of of someone trying to juggle four knife balls. No. Oh, please no. Uh, da, 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 da. Chad is demanding right. a tw uh, a revive God roll. <laughs> a revive God roll. So here's what happens. Uh, Alexa uh, Alexander. Sorry, I got to get her name again. <laughs> It's really long. Uh... Her name is Alexa Alexander Alexi. Uh, she comes around the corner and goes to touch Captain Fairless and is just like, um, this is going to cost you guys, okay? Okay. Uh, and let's see. I think this is really, really a fucking and she's like, expensive. she's like, why haven't you removed the knife ball? This is fucking <laughs> idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh shit, I think it doesn't work on people who are dead. Never mind. I think you might actually be super dead right now, oh, buddy. It's okay, not like the old days where someone can... Oh, wait. Uh, do, 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 do. Commit effort. Uh, da, 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 da. Man, this is rough. Oh, wait. Major organ restoration. Uh, uh, is, is a hand considered an organ? Yes. <laughs> I mean, your whole body's in some bad. I guess it was just the epidermis. Oh the epidermis is considered an organ, I think, technically. Sure. Uh, your whole body's shutting down from shock, though. That's the problem. All right. She can do this. She touches you, and you come back to life. But you're unconscious for 24 hours. Uh, and she, <laughs> that's it. She <laughs> sends you guys a bill for 3,060 credits. Oh, that's I his bill. It. Yeah, so <laughs> that's his she bill. just like touches him and then like wipes the blood on her hand off on his clothes. She's like, ew, ew, ew. Okay. Next, next to the spaghetti stains. It's, it's a good thing I was here. Uh, and also that I was chasing you down for not paying. There's nothing on this cred ship, by the way. Uh, it's blank. Oh, sorry. Let, uh, let me Ezekiel, let me. pay the woman. D yeah, <laughs> and I, I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take the cred ship off of uh, his unconscious body, and uh, then uh, thumb over. Uh, the I'm sorry, my unconscious body. Yeah, that's. What I don't think I have a cred. Oh, yeah, oh he did he hand it to me? You. He handed it to you. Okay. Unless you put it down somewhere before you started juggling knife balls. Uh, in which oh. case, I'll take it off your desk. Uh, and, and just thumb over the correct amount that we owe her and say, Alexei, let me make this up for you. I take you to dinner. No, thanks. I'm going out with my brother tonight. Later, losers. You can come too. <laughs> She's just like, oh. Hmm. Make a roll. I'm interested. Okay. I'm interested, Diego. <laughs> uh, Juan Diego Elman. Uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be talk. Okay. Because connect is used to find people, and you have already charisma? found a person. Yep. Okay. That's a nine. Uh, she's like, all right, fine, whatever. Okay. It's not like I care or anything. I'll pick you up at eight. I'm right next door. We, we literally have matching storefronts right next door. Yes, but I have business to take care of until 8 o'clock, and I need to change out of this bloody mess. Okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, I think she probably stops near Dean and just looks at him. So, Dean, you're unconscious for 24 hours. Uh, but she says to you, she's just like, maybe you shouldn't play with knife balls. Sitting back down and just staring at everyone, looking confused. Okay, I haven't had a rush like that since in the last star fight we were in. So, I mean, <laughs> is it worth it? Maybe. I see why they're so popular. 
Okay. We need yeah. to move these knife balls as soon as possible, guys. Hopefully <laughs> within the 24 hour period before I wake up, you've gotten rid of the knife balls. It takes a week uh. to move goods, so they're going to be mean, around for a long time. can at least get time. them into storage away from my my hands. They're, they're oh, I'm going to I'm going to lock this I'm going to lock the suitcase and keep the key on me, that's for sure. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I'm not really clear how it was that like you wound up with the suitcase over the last couple of days. It just kind of made its way into your room, and then you it's were one the of those one things that just appeared. <laughs> it's like, I mean, hmm. it's Chekhov's suitcase, right? You knew he was going to play with it at some point because we showed how dangerous they were. Uh, so. It's true. Juan, do we want to follow your dinner date with the uh, Alexis? Sure. All right. So, oh my, Al Alexa, Alexander, Alexi, and Alexander, Alexa, Alexi, uh, both show up. She's very small with giant poofy hair, and he's very large with shaved head. But other than that, they look very similar, uh, almost like they're clones of each other, just with different proportions. They they have their own language that they speak to each other, just like twins do, uh, and have the super annoying habit of like feeding each other food as well. Uh, are they just like like no look? Side, yeah, side feeding. Yep. Flirt with them both equally. All right, so uh, Alexa is just like, ah, uh, no, Alexa, stop. <laughs> Jesus, I think I might have made a mistake when I named these characters. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Alexa, order five gallons of like, Don't do yeah, that. Don't. don't fucking do that. You're People like, watch know. this show without headphones on. Yeah. Like, I don't know why I named this PC OK Google. It was a bad idea. <laughs> don't do that, guys. Please don't. Uh, it was like why I had to turn Siri off when we were playing Mouse Guard because whenever I was talking in the the voice of um, uh, my character, uh, it would Siri would think that I was calling her. Like no matter what I said, it didn't matter. It was just when just I was tone. that high tone voice. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Uh, so let's see here. I'm curious. <laughs> I mean, I just want to kind of repair relations with our neighbor and, you know. Can you make a mental saving throw real quick? For no apparent reason. Um, I mean, it's not like they're psychic or anything that we <laughs> totally saw earlier. Where are saving I mean, one of them's obviously psychic. <laughs> oh, there it is. It was minimized. There we go. Mental saving throw. Rolled. Okay. All right. Uh... Alexa looks a little annoyed at her brother, who just shrugs and is like, Huh. You have a strong mind, Juan Diego. I'm glad you think so. <laughs> Not only part of that's strong. Can I ask what your intentions toward my sister are? We are neighbors. And, uh, yes, I'm also your neighbor. She did us a very big favor, and had you been the one to do the favor, then this would have been me asking you. As it hmm. was, she insisted that you come along, and uh, kind of like looks him up and down. I'm not sad that she did. What a strangely simplistic and primitive viewpoint. I'm glad you think so. Uh, the two of them go back to feeding each other without looking. Uh, and then at one point, Alexi will stand up and say, hmm. I'll leave her to you tonight. No need to uh, leave on my account. Unless not what you want, Alexa. So Alexa's just like, we've talked it over. It's fine. Well, thank you. Then Kelsa, as... going for the tricycle right off the bat. You I mean, know? she's only getting the one, but... It's okay, we just gotta, you gotta lay have the groundwork. You gotta have high goals, right? You gotta lay the groundwork. Uh, 
yeah, so Alexa continues her date with you while Alexander withdraws for the evening. Nice. And she's just questioning how you got a knife ball is probably the first. <laughs> like, she's just like, I've seen some pretty bad wounds before. They're very icky. Uh, and that one was pretty bad. How did you guys even get a knife ball? They don't make those things anymore. We get a quick flashback. It's like six flashbacks of you guys <laughs> telling me to stop playing with the knife balls <laughs> in different locations. <laughs> oh man! And since and 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 it all like all goes back in the end to um, Ezekiel and like uh, us being like, yeah, we need something. And him being like, I know just the thing. And like, he goes in like his parents' garage, like that, like his mom had, had like stockpiled them or like had like collected Oh, like them Beanie Babies. Yeah. Children, you know? Oh, I feel like now we it's see. It's like underneath a bunch of like ornaments and like decoration lights. And uh -huh. so there's like different skins you can get on them or like clip things so that the blades will only come out at certain parts and you can paint the clips. Some of them have, like, faces of, of celebrities from, like, 30 years ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, one of them looks surprisingly like Michael Jackson for no apparent reason. One of them looks <laughs> like Alexa. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Interesting. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just, trying, I'm just trying to trigger people's devices. No, I'll stop. Just stop. No. <laughs> stop. Uh, uh cool. so yeah, Alexa's question still hangs in the air. Where the hell did you get this thing? Uh, are you asking me for trade secrets? I thought we were on a date. Oh, come now. I'm not like you adventuring type captains. We mostly just operate in this system. And besides, I would never deal in something that could accidentally stab me in the hand to death. Well, if... <clears throat> If you're careful, there's no problem. Unfortunately, Dean is not very careful. Well, now that is a trade secret. I'm feeling generous. Where do you want this date to go? Uh, gotta All leave her hanging. All the way. Gotta yeah, leave her know. hanging. Yeah. All right. Oh, wow. Uh, what a dick. Then I feel like after walking her back to the storefront from the restaurant, she offers for you to come in her storefront. It's been a long day. Have a good night. Uh. So, she, so as you what go next door to your storefront, dick, where Dean and Jonas are like, Dean is lying down on the ground still, and Ezekiel and Jonas are like. <laughs> Eating oh, dinner no. together. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, she like stands there and clenches her fists. And like you can see her, her drill tails shaking. as she's super angry that you just left her here. Uh, and storms inside the shop and starts shrieking. She's just like, Alexi, what the fuck? Do I hear that? Yeah, you can hear next door that the, the twins are having a fight. The hell did you do? Nothing, and that's the problem. Well, you're kind of a dick. Nice. <laughs> I go back to eating. <laughs> uh, Dean, you wake up the next day. Uh, you've got like two soup cans on your chest, and someone's left a magazine over your face. You have one hit point. Uh, and you feel. <laughs> Isn't one hit point his max hit points? No, he has two hit points. You feel awful. You feel kind of like someone sledgehammered your entire body. I mean, uh, I, my body feels awful. I have no regrets. <laughs> <laughs> I guess emotionally you feel very stable. Your body feels kind of like you died. Oh, wow, and then we're forcibly a, regenerated. That was a bad catch, eh? I should practice with uh, just regular ball maybe for a bit. Uh, Ezekiel is just like, I don't think that's going to help, Mr. Fairless. Uh, it just randomly spouts a blade out. So, you know, given the circumference of your hand versus the ball, there's like a one in five chance that you're going to stab yourself, no matter how good you are at catching it. Well, I wonder if the designers knew that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they did. That's why they're banned on almost every planet. Yeah. 
sort of like lawn darts in the earth that was. The earth that was? <laughs> That's just a legend. <laughs> no one believes in that crap anymore, sir. Lawn, lawn darts are just a legend. I mean, come on. No one could could throw a dart that big. Uh, uh, are you kidding? <laughs> I mean, the, the lawn darts of legend are hundreds of feet long. It's ridiculous stories. Are they like Scottish cabers? <laughs> cabers. <Yeah. laughs> All right. Then in that case, he's just like, that's true. They say it required Earth Superman in order to do it. Genetically modified superhumans. Um, I don't believe in Earth anyway. Oh, don't, yeah, well, it still, still makes some good storytelling. Sure, sure, but the people who believe in Earth are like those crazy flat labellans that think that labella is just a long, flat object and that we fake the moon landing. Well, there's, there's no conclusive proof either way, as far as I can tell in my you have research. A, you have a spaceship. You literally have gone around the world several hundred I mean, times I've in heard one minute. I've heard very convincing uh, arguments that it's it's actually a trick of the light being played on. Are me. you joking with me right now, or do no, you yeah, really I'm, believe this? I'm you just know, throwing he had around. A lot him, of, yeah. He had a lot of blood loss. I don't. Think oh, he's... that's true. Plus I, all of the chemicals from. I've the got at least three blood left. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Yugi! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> For those that aren't watching. <laughs> Yugi just put flat labellas as justice in chat. My god. It's, we've just gone to anime. We've gone w right past the joke into a whole separate joke. Uh, uh, um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, can we get meta wheat in there somewhere? Um, so I, uh, how long do I need to rest to like heal up? Or do I need to go to a doctor? You'll need another get... day to get more healing. Okay, so just relax time. Yep. Um, um, I, I, gin and tonics. While uh, while he was still out, probably early not in gin the day, and tonics. Uh, probably not. But I don't think it's going to stop him. But uh, I think that uh, Juan Diego has started like trying to to find those buyers. Like he went through the paperwork that uh, Ezekiel got together. Okay. All right. Uh, we're gonna make our first bargain roll here to see how good your bargains are. Please. So. On a 10 or 11, the base... Well, your final modified roll uh, of a 10, your base price is 100000 uh, mm -hmm. Minus maybe one unit for the one that I assume that the captain's tucked away. We'll the just bloody, keep it at 10000 the, the bloodied one, yeah. Uh, uh, that, was, that was taken away from him. I assume he tucked one away on the ship somewhere. Yeah, probably well, well, that did. is a possibility. I'd like uh, five episodes from now, you're just gonna pull it out and almost die again. Accidentally sit on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, who's making this deal? Uh, it's me. All right, I need you to roll one d six to start with to see okay. if you got troubles. Oh troubles no! With the capital T. I don't think I can actually add four. Is uh, that troubles? You are good. There are no troubles. Yay! We like no troubles. No troubles is good. Uh, next, we need to get the friction rating on each world that you're selling on. So you're selling on a specific world, and there's no problems. Uh, the friction rating in Biatra is a 2, which is very good. It's about as good as you can get without being in with the local government. So I thought I was in what, with the local government. Uh, of... with, no, with Labella? What? You crazy? Oh, not Labella. What is the actual uh, product that we have? Uh, it's just a general good that's unlisted. Oh, okay. Uh, you can sell other products. Like you, gotcha. I've, I have several products on the list that are just made up. Uh, gotcha. Right now, these are just like general goods. So mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to get any bonuses or minuses to this role. You know what? Gotcha. I'll say this is a luxury luxury item. You know, kind of like how people want Tamagotchis now that you can't have they one. They are rare. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. So you get a plus one on your roll. So uh, this is how it goes. When I you're feel a lot better knowing that it'll be killing a bunch of rich kids. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. 
they're cool. rare, but they'd be worth a lot more if we had a complete set mint in box. Yeah. Unfortunately, you've already opened the box one. several times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shouldn't have, maybe. Oh. So here's the deal. Uh, you roll 3d6, then you mm-hmm. subtract the local friction rating, which is two, and then you add any bonuses to the goods, which is one. So now you're at a minus one. And then you add your expertise rating. Uh, in this case, your expertise rating is equal to your trade skill, your connection skill, and your intelligence or charisma. And that's out of everybody. You can pool all of your resources together. Uh, okay. So what's your your guys' best trade? One. Connection? Virgil? Zero. Okay. Uh, best charisma, I think, is a plus two. Yep. Uh, so that gives you a plus three, which means you come ahead with a plus two on this roll. So you're rolling and 3d6. Uh, there was intelligence in there Since too, we're... wasn't there? It's intelligence or charisma. Oh, okay. okay. So um, so overall plus two. 3d6 plus two. And All right, let's go high. Uh, you get a six. Oh my God. Uh, 40% that is off. Incredibly low. That's really bad. Uh, I could have. On- There's only uh, one one way I could have done worse. That's so bad. So you have an outstanding offer for 60,000 credits. Uh, I mean, if you take this, you will not. Like these are covered in blood. This is this is a <laughs> unsuccessful trade deal. You can't even get the base price back, so you will not make a profit on this. Technically, we're selling them for the second time. Yes, yeah. but you need to make a profitable <laughs> trade deal, and uh, this is not one. The, I mean, I guess that's fair. Uh, shit. So you have a decision. You can make, uh, you can make the deal, or. You can try to go again, which is a lot I think harder. You try f- and go again. If you go again, the friction rating starts to go up. I, I mean, which causes bigger problems. Yes, right? it does cause bigger problems down the line. Um, I mean, I think if we can't get a good deal here, we're gonna we could walk away. Yeah, I, I think uh, instead I should start seeing what's for sale. Just walk outside, away. When the outstanding offer is that low, I'm like, no. Um, uh, we'll just hold on to this and just keep them out of Dean's hands. I mean, yeah, they yeah. don't take up much space. They, they're a suitcase, for God's sake. So Right. So ah, you have three options here. You can take the deal, which is the best price you can find under current market conditions, or mm-hmm. wait a month and get a plus one on your friction, or... You can attempt a local, less orthodox marketing maneuver and go on an adventure on the planet. We could just go straight to, find to the elementary buyer. schools and sell them <laughs> one by one. Um, I don't think being street in, dealers is going to work out for you, but selling to a gang lord. windowless van. No. Because that will work out no, so much better. Not, not even going to talk about this. This is totally wrong. No. Hey, kid, catch. <laughs> uh so are you are you cutting from this uh yeah i right. think um ezekiel is just like listing the best possible buyers and he's like i'm sorry it's it's not a lot uh these goods i mean they're not completely illegal but no one really wants to buy them also the the medic showed up yesterday and had to file a report about a knife ball wound and uh yeah i mean the local plane is just talking about how dangerous knife ball is we need to move out of the system to sell these, but that's all right. Oh, okay, well, uh... Got a little bit right, of... Ezekiel. You did good. You did good. Okay. We can, uh, we can pick something else up and head on over to, uh, Estokbarin. Okay. Uh, so one week has passed, so it's now January 8th. <laughs> also, uh, I, I realize I did not actually, um subtract the funds for that uh for the re- resurrection for the 30 3060 yeah. for two las patches and like i'm not i'm not high gonna level pay for that. i was just about to wake up you should have just waited uh-huh, uh-huh. i was fine i was just having a little dream 3060? i was having this weird yep. dream where my whole life was playing out in front of me you ever had that one uh-huh <laughs> i hadn't before but <laughs> Uh, so you want to figure out what you can buy in the local trade market, right? Is Uh, that what you said you're going to try to do right now? Yes. All right. Uh, trade tables. So I roll 2d10s 
And those are the goods that you get that are locally available. Just double checking. Again, this is the first time we've done this in a really long time. Yeah. It's when a big. fart trader looks for something to sell, oh, you roll 2d10. Uh, okay. This indicates the two best commodities with good pricing. Good luck. 2d10s. Eh, roll 2d10. Go. Uh, all right, seven. roll a 10 again. Okay. It's another seven. You get triple sevens. Yep. All right, seven and five. Triple seven is worth a lot, right? That's that's like money. That's yeah. not even close to how it works. Uh, uh, do, 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 the Octra system. And, uh, uh, astronomical, astronomical tools. tools. Not bad. Uh, definitely fine liquor. That is always profitable. Um, let me check out these astronomical tools real quick. Twenty-five thousand. We're gonna be shipping booze and knife balls. <laughs> uh, yeah, the perfect Farm? combination. Uh, that's orange. Okay. Uh, let's see, orange does not care very much about liquor. Uh. Mm, oh man and look okay liquor is expensive liquor is here. expensive here that's correct yeah we don't want liquor here okay i want to sell liquor here then yeah um definitely astronomic astronomic all right astronomic <laughs> tools are 20 percent off normally uh you have a minus two to the roll uh, uh which means that your roll is a plus uh, i'm gonna have to work this out so it's 3d6 and then the friction is added to this roll Okay. Uh, so plus two. two, and then you have minus two, which brings it to zero, and then you have a three on your roll. So, so it's three d six minus three to see what okay. you buy it at. Great, and um, um, uh, two questions. Mm -hmm. One, um, is the friction rating listed somewhere on? It's the troubles. Uh, the dock. So if it says like troubles two, that means a friction rating of two. Okay. Okay. Brilliant. Okay. And that's good to know. Uh, why do I have this open twice? Um, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Um, so just roll it. Eight. That's, All right. That's you good. can get uh, your units at 20% off. Sweet. How many units do you want to buy? Three. Three. All right. Uh, three units is seventy-five thousand, and then my giant calculator here is going to pop up, pop up times uh, point eight is sixty thousand credits. We just... so could have actually gotten four, I think. Um. Because twenty percent off, that'd be eighty thousand. I would prefer to play it safe. Um, for two That's reasons. Fair. One, we can use that money to buy something that will sell better somewhere else later. And two, um, it's something that I think um, I, I think it would be better just to have that money for emergencies in case you know Dean gets himself stabbed with a knife ball again. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, that's you know. that's it perfectly happens. reasonable. <laughs> I really feel like it was a great intro for the character since he didn't die. It would have kind of not as been great as he died. That was really, really, really close. That was just the worst rolls ever. Uh so what we see is uh a montage of Ezekiel going out to other concourses and like talking to people, bringing people back to the shop to speak with you. Uh, you guys like going to look at uh, dead starships that are being like salvaged and scrapped. And uh, at one point, there's like a bulk freighter that pulls up with just like this enormous pile of tools. And the best of them are picked out and placed in your starship. Uh, so let's see here. These things take up a certain amount of space. I think they take up. Uh, each unit is what, like 30 tons? Each unit is 10 tons, I think. So uh, you've got like one fifth of your cargo filled right now. Uh, so yeah, like your ship it's has a, bad for a, a bunch of shit in the back of it now. Just like a heaping pile of not exactly scrap, but you know, things that in an, in an emergency you would use to repair a ship in flight. 
just like these giant pallets of stacked tool cases and everything like that on one side. And then on the other side, there's a pallet with a single briefcase under netting <laughs> tied <tight> up. <laughs> it's got like a little uh, toy alarm thing where if you get too close to it, it begins making dog barking noises. Yeah. We finished we finish cinching down all the <clears throat> all the tools and stuff, and I just look wistfully for a moment, and then we, we leave. <clears throat> Ezekiel uh, is like doing this with his hands so he's been standing and watching you guys load all the pallets and he's just like that's a hard day's work done everybody good job look at this dog I'm just kind of peek around the boxes like what <laughs> yeah I think we did some good work here for yeah, prison yeah. court good job yeah, on, on what did you do be a lot better if you if you helped us next time, that would be fantastic. Oh, we I'm do, the one that do, finds all these good deals and stuff, we right? We do pay you, right? I mean, I'm I'm 15 years old. You know, there are labor laws and stuff. I mean, we do pay you, right? I think so. I've been drawing Pretty a paycheck sure. regularly. Look, if you could just well, start washing your dang cereal bowls. <laughs> He's like, that's not me. That's the engineer. He keeps taking my cereal and then leaving it out after talking, eating half of it. I don't know what you're talking about. Look, everyone knows teenagers forget to wash their cereal bowls. I just think you're a little better than that. Come on, Captain Farless. You have to know that I am better than that. I'm very responsible. That's like why you hired me. I out at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this uh, is a good place to take our, our seven-minute mid-time break. Sure. So we'll be back in the second half. Now we've got a dangerous cargo of knife balls and ship repair parts. Uh... <laughs> For, and doggo for astronautics yeah and we have a dog Ooh, look uh, a little tiny dog she's so it's tiny been a strange episode so far we'll see how it shapes up in the second half Why enjoy the music because she just got spayed you can't chew oh. on the on where the soul bits are we don't right. want her eating